that was a, a multi-minute uh, uh, scroll of your your accomplishment. So I, I, you know, obviously we have to ask about your origin story. What got you interested in cybersecurity in the first place? What was what was the attraction? Well, it started actually with technology. So there were sort of two technology to security incidents that happened in my life. My first, I absolutely fell in love with technology when I was nine years old and my dad brought home a programmable uh, Texas Instruments calculator. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh my God. And I think he thought my brother might be more interested, not because of a gender thing, but just because my brother was a little bit older um, okay. and seemed to be more technical and I was kind of more arty. Um, but uh, I absolutely fell in love with this thing. I was like, oh my God, you can program this calculator. And I thought it was absolutely amazing. And then a few years later, we built a Heathkit computer together. Oh, and ultimately, cool. I was that's eight. a name I haven't heard in ages. That's yeah. so cool. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So for listeners, we are talking the mid to late 1970s. So okay. we're, yep. we're taking yep. you back a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. Heathkit was a whole, whole a whole range of things you could order through the mail. And it was just had all your circuit boards and you just built it all yourself. You build a radio, you build a I didn't know you could build a computer. That's amazing. You could, you could. Yeah. And, and then, I mean, then it was like, we could advance to like the TRS eighties, the sure. level ones and level two. So like, then it was like the PC started to be a thing, but yeah, early yeah. on you had to build your own. And and we had, if you've ever seen the, the uh, movie war games with Matthew oh, yeah. Roderick, Many times. he has to, he, I think actually he might have, I had a dial phone, but you know, he takes his phone, Take the whole phone it receiver into, <laughs> into a modem coupler. Yeah. So that right. was, that's how I got started. My dad was a, a research professor at MIT and Lincoln Lab, so he was okay. able to get uh, an account. Um, so it was like it was a, a limited account right. on the the DARPA because MIT was was wow. connected to the DARPA in the seventies, and so I was able to couple modem couple into the uh, to Tech Square at MIT in Cambridge with their PDP tens and elevens, and that they were connected then to what was the DARPA at the time, which was, I, I think, I forget the exact number, but we're talking like maybe 200 servers total. Yeah. On the, so the, the yeah, quote unquote yeah. internet in the 70s. For, for folks who don't know what, what DARPA, DARPA net is like that you're, we're talking about the literal like birth of the internet. <laughs> you yeah. were right. You were right there. Yeah. And I fell in love. I yeah. was absolutely, I was just, I could talk to people, you know, in California. And this is back in a time when, again, for people that, that aren't, you know, of a certain age, as I am, um, you might forget that it actually was extremely expensive to call outside of your calling circle yes. yeah. back in the day. So even calling to a different state, calling across the country was cost prohibitive for a lot right. of people. So as, as a, a kid, Especially for I didn't, durations like that. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't have access to being able to call. So, but now suddenly I, I was on, on these systems and I could speak with people in real time in California and in DC. And again, you know, a lot, as we think back to the seventies, people may not realize that we actually had email Mm -hmm. We had instant messenger. It was called talk, uh, okay. but it was, it all existed. It didn't look as pretty and it was not mobile, <laughs> you know, and that you could yeah. like carry it around in your pocket, but we had those. And so I was just blown away. I was like, I'm absolutely in love with this. Right. And um, I wanted to know more about how the systems work. And I found very quickly that I didn't have access to read some of the manuals okay. that were online. And I then found out that there was a flaw in the login system so that when you logged in, what you saw on your screen was actually an uh, asterisk as you typed your password. But there okay. was an, a vulnerability in that. And you could actually ghost the system. You could kind of see what other people were typing. Mm. So I got the password of an admiral and I logged in. I was essentially super used because I was logged in as me. And then I logged in as this admiral. I did ha at that point have access to all the manuals I wanted to read. But promptly the next day, my father had to sit me down and have a conversation with me because the admins of the system saw what I did and said, look, now, yeah. again, if you're a 13 year old child in 2021 and you say, oh, I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't mean any harm. You don't have a lot of plausible deniability. Yeah. But in 1978, 1979, um, that was actually, these were so new, these systems are so new that they gave me the benefit of the doubt. I have been told since then by some uh, uh, people in the government, like, don't worry, because uh, I, I was not, there was no 
a hacker thing. They just said, look, we saw what you did. We know that you just wanted to read the manuals, but what you did was wrong. You can't take somebody else's password for their access. Right. So I never did anything like that again. I learned my lesson, but I got really interested in the whole, you know, that when there are flaws or vulnerabilities, systems work differently. Mm-hmm. Fast forward now to when I'm actually out in a professional career. I didn't go to college for computer science. I didn't think that I didn't know what kind of, of you know, career future there would be. So I actually was an English major. And when I graduated, I was working for publishing companies. Hmm. But I was always the go-to computer person. And I worked my way up to being an assistant editor where I was doing acquisitions of software to go with the math textbooks at the company that I worked for. And this was early on. Software was pretty new for math textbooks. Things like you could have the... Um, the quizzes and the, the professors could could print them out and everything. Um, but it, this was all very new and it fell on me because I was always the go-to computer person. And uh, as someone saw me, uh, the woman who ran the, the network saw me and said, you know, I think that you actually should be our computer person. And so it was very exciting. And we're going to tie together our networks for all the different divisions of the parent company mm-hmm. uh, of, of them too. We're in the Boston area. So I was super excited. Um, I did take the job. I was a little scared and I, I'm so grateful to the person who supported me and, and saw something in me, Yeah, which is one of the reasons I spend a lot of time giving back now because you know my life has changed because of her belief in me. And I'm so grateful. New episodes of the Cyberwork Podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn to stay up to date on all things cyberwork.